Well, hey, good morning. Welcome back to part three of the restoration of this single sewing machine and cabinet. Today I'm going to try to knock off getting some finish on this wood. We'll get uh, some sealer on it and we'll shoot some color on it to richen up a little bit and start laying on coats of lacquer. If all goes well, I'm hoping I get at least two coats of lacquer on today plus the color in the, in the sealer. Uh, and as things are drying, I'm going to start pulling the metal out and start getting that wire brushed off, cleaning the wire brushed off so we can move on to painting that probably on Sunday and get this thing reassembled and out of here. So stick with us. Again, because of the, uh, the amount of uh, you know, repetitive, tedious work, I'll just shoot uh, segments of, of what I do real quickly. The seal coat will go on. That gets sprayed on. That helps seal the wood up, put two coats on any of the flat surfaces that are exposed, one coat on the structural stuff. And that'll get sanded down with probably uh, four out steel wool. If that's not enough, I'll use uh, 320 grit sandpaper. Then we brush it off, and I'll shoot on some color. My color is a mix of acetone based dye with a little bit of lacquer and a lot of lacquer, uh, lacquer thinner. I'll shoot that on until it looks good to me, and then I'll shoot uh, lacquer over it and then repeat the coats and possibly glaze and whatever I need to do to get the color just the way I want. But that's the plan for today. It's a kind of a chilly morning here in North Georgia. We had our first frost last night uh, after we had the big rain that came through. Unfortunately, some people lost their lives out in Alabama. And I'm very sorry to hear that. But uh, had a couple of tornadoes touch down in Metro Atlanta, but uh, we skated by okay up where we are. So stick with us. It's time to start putting some finish on these. the pieces we've got them uh, sealed up as soon as they get hard I'll flip this one over and seal the bottom because remember this pulls up and also this there should be one other I think it's still outside that flips over oh it's this so when this hardens up and we get it sanded off I'll have to flip it over and do the back side too but uh, there we are and like I say we'll just leave the heat on here and let this harden up I think I'm going to go outside and set up and start stripping off the, uh, the metal. I'm getting ready to uh, go out and wire brush the metal parts of this project and I just want to take a second and remind you, and you all know that I am not captain safety, but when you're using a 1100, I'm sorry, 11,000 RPM angle grinder and a wire brush on 100 year old cast iron, you are out of your mind if you don't have protective equipment on. I'll be using these heavy mechanics gloves to protect my hands, this face shield to protect my face. I've got my safety glasses, which are prescription on, and then hearing protection. Now, I'm pretty deaf already, but what the heck, it's cheap insurance, and I'll be doing that outside. So I'll show you the setup and how I do it, but please, if you're going to be doing this kind of stuff, particularly with wire brushes, which have a tendency to come apart, grinding wheels have been known to explode too. Um, you know, here's a grinding wheel and uh, they've been known to come apart at 11,000 RPM. So please, have your safety equipment on for this, this kind of thing. Well, here's what we're using, and it's working extremely well. It's just blowing that paint right off of there. So I'm going to turn you off. You can see that I've got the workpiece clamped to the table, so I don't have to worry about it catching and flying off. And I'll knock off as much of that paint and rust as I can, and we'll get this prepped for paint. Well, after about an hour or so of wire brushing, um, hats off, that Makita 4.5-inch angle grinder with the... Uh, braided wire cup did an incredibly good job on getting uh, most of the paint and rust right off of these. Just a tedious, time-consuming job. A little hard on the arms and hands, but uh, this is ready to be painted now. And excuse me for moving you around. Here's the rest of the pieces. You can see they clean up, clean up really nicely.
Okay, here's the results of the uh, color that we sprayed on. I think we've pulled everything very, very close together. I'm very happy with everything except this. Remember, this is the new top we put on, and I know it's hard for you to, to determine the color differences here. But as you can see, I hope you can see, this is, this is just a tad redder. This is a tad browner and actually a tad darker. And I think that once this color is set for just a minute, I'm going to shoot a coat of lacquer on it, let that lacquer harden, and then I'm going to put some glaze on it, probably a, a raw umber glaze to try to brown it up just a little bit. But other than that, I think we'll just start shooting lacquer on, uh, on all these other pieces. And again, this garage we don't care about. There's the, the front drawer. That's in good shape. Well, let's give everything just a few minutes to, uh, to harden up, and we'll come back in and shoot the first coat of lacquer. Here's everything with its first coat of lacquer on it. You can get a good look at it. I think it looks really, really nice. I'm very, very happy. There's that drawer with the bobbins. Here's the hinge piece that goes in the front. Here's the main table. And then here's our, our lid. We still have to shoot lacquer on the underside. We'll let this get hard. Hey, here's something I wanted to show you. There's a caution. If you can see right here, let me see if I can, there you go. Something dropped on this, a piece of dust or something off the fan or the ceiling. These things happen. Don't freak out. Leave it alone. When the lacquer gets nice and hard, you'll probably just be able to pop it off or rub it off with a piece of 4 out steel wool before you shoot the next coat. If you go digging at it while the lacquer's soft, you're going to create a mess that's going to take you forever to fix. Just leave it alone. So here we go. Uh, the colors here are pulling closer together, but this needs this just needs some raw umber on it, I think, to, to green it down a little bit. So we'll everything harden up, and before we shoot the second coat of lacquer, I think we're going to hit this with some raw umber glaze and see if that helps. But so far, so good. It's looking looking very, very nice. I'm real happy with the drawers. They look great. Okay, I'll bring you back when it's time for the glaze. Okay, we're going to put some Van Dyke brown glaze on this lid here and see if we can get it a little bit closer in color to that. It's not very far off and I'm sure as you see it, it almost looks identical, but just watch to see how this starts to darken as the glaze goes on. Again, glaze is a coloring product that's designed to go between finish coats rather than directly on the wood or be a finished coat of its own. And it will give you a, a deeper, richer color. It can give you some tone changes, and it gives you some depth of color. It can give you a little bit of texture in your color, if you so wish. Pretty good, pretty good product. I'm thinking that's going to do what we need it to do. When I apply blade, uh, glaze, I put it on with a with a chip brush and put on as much as you want. I'm going to come around on this side here. You can still see maybe over here. I've got this other piece here. I can keep an eye on it. Compare the colors. And then I use a dry brush technique where with the grain I brush it out and then wipe the 
wipe the uh, glaze off on a rag. Now Mohawk glaze is designed to be top coated within a few hours otherwise it can give you some finish problems. Um, it does not dry completely before you top coat it and that's something that tripped me up initially when I started to use this but I spoke to my Mohawk rep and he assured me that it just doesn't dry a hundred percent but it's fine to shoot the lacquer coat over top of it. I guess it's designed that way. You know, I'm not a chemist, so what do I know? But it works. I've had pretty good luck with it. That's much better already. So that's it from uh, just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. Thanks for watching. Best regards. See you next video.